We've got my man Jaquan here. Jaquan's moving down here to Pinellas County, Florida to live, but he's going to be personal training. He personal trained for how long now, Quan? Were you training up there? In... Seven years. Seven years. Okay, yeah. awesome. So seven years experience. He's moving down. Dad and brother live down here, correct? Oh, yeah. My my my, my dad lives in Sarasota and my, my brother lives in um, St. Petersburg. Very nice. Very nice. So He's going to be come down here. We're going to be sharing a facility together. We're going to bring him here, bring him on here on the For the Lions, the Iron Kingdom, where we interview entrepreneurs, we interview fitness influencers, we interview strength and conditioning coaches, anybody that has anything to do with the fitness realm or entrepreneur realm. We'd like to bring them in, let them talk about their experience, what they could, what they could offer to the next generation or people in the up and coming employees for, for our field and give them some advice and give them some insight. And so what we're going to do today is we're just going to get to know him a little bit better. We're going to get to know where he came from, what he did. He's a professional athlete, ex-professional athlete. And from what I've seen and talked to him, he's a great personal trainer. So we're going to just kind of get to know him, let him talk about his philosophy with everything. And then we're going to let you know how to get a hold of him to train with him. So Juan, go ahead and just give us a little bit of background, brother. And tell us who you are, where you come from. And then just kind of walk us through where you started to where you are now. Okay. Well, um, my name is uh, Jaquan Brown, 28 years of age, uh, from a small city called Brunswick, Georgia. I literally just moved here to Largo, Florida, which is right outside of Clearwater, a uh, few weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Tampa, Tampa, St. Pete area. Tampa, St. Pete. Saint, Everybody always... Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, Pinellas County. We'll yeah, say that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Everybody's like, you're in Tampa. I'm like, well, not, not really. Not but I quite. Mean, yeah. We'll if that's, if that's your closest reference. Yeah. Cause everybody from where I'm at, brother, like you go down to Miami and see Sid. I'm like, that's five fucking hours away. I don't go down there that much. Yeah. Hell no. It's, it's a distance. They think Florida, everything's like right by. Itself. Nah, it's not that close. So it's actually a big state. So yeah, I've been training seven years. I actually started training when I was 21. And for those that don't know, I actually used to hate, I hated training. Like I couldn't stand it. Um, mainly because. I play basketball, played two years professionally over in Germany, and I wanted to be recognized as a basketball player, not as a personal trainer, not as a fitness guy. Now, I remember I used to, I'd be in my hometown, grocery store, gas station, and people would go, man, how much would you charge me for you to train me or whatever? That's what I would get asked. And I'd be like, no, I'm not a trainer. Like, go to such and such. They're, they're yeah, happy. Yeah. And it's crazy how that, that one thing that I was running from ended up becoming my life now. Passion for fitness. I just never liked the personal training side of it. Um, mm. Graduated high school 2014. and went to Glen Academy. I uh, played one year of high school. only played one year um, of high school basketball. Played a little bit of football, um, but I didn't really love it as much. Um, so I stopped playing and really put all my attention on basketball. So for those that don't know, I never played college. I never even went to college. Oh, wow. 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 Okay. I college. When, nice. I was ni- when I was 19, it was a friend of the family. He, he had some professional uh, basketball connects, and that's kind of how I got put on. But I didn't end up, I didn't play my first year professionally until 2018. Um, 2018, I played. 2019, I played. But I actually ended up getting injured. I injured my hip, and I was sidelined for like four and a half months. Couldn't walk. What did you do your hip, buddy? It was like a, a small hip impingement. Okay. Yeah, it was hip impingement. Um, I got someone set a illegal screen. It was a legal screen, kind of knocked my hip out. So sideline four months, tried to hit the ground running, training and rehabbing, and then COVID hit. So mm-hmm. um, and then that once COVID hit, I I'm not gonna go too deep into that, but once COVID hit, there were some rules and regulations that you had to abide by to play abroad that I was against. I was against the rules. So I stopped playing, and that's when I, I always, like I said, I always had a passion for fitness, but then I started to look at it from a um, personal training standpoint where, you know, you helping somebody lose weight or build muscle or whatever their, their fitness goals are, and then you seeing the excitement that they get, and that get, it makes you feel good. So, yeah, um, yeah I fell in love with that, man. So that's that's why I'm at with it now. Well, that's one of the big things I tell people is, like, mine's a little bit different. I, where I'm from, from a small town in Missouri, so, like, it's, like, Texas football-ish, the like, in fifth grade. It's like, see, Sam makes fun of me. My my wife makes fun of me because I ask people, what's the population? She's like, who the fuck knows that? I'm like, I'm from a small town, so that makes it different. I'm like, we're talking, <laughs> like, 500 people? We're talking, like, 5,000? We're talking 10,000? Maryville, I think, is, like, 10, 12,000. See, yeah. we're, like, 14. Yeah, yeah, so you're in yeah. Maryville. So, uh, so I tell people, I'm like, that's why we ask, because we, yeah. like, are you, 
you can't city of Atlanta. Like, what are we talking here? You're like, yeah, right. You know, what are, what are, but Sam's never, you know, she's from Jersey. So okay. she's never heard of that and shit. But you were saying going into, uh, we had a conversation earlier. You're saying one of the things about being from a small town, like we are. And I tell everybody, it's like, if I would have stayed up in Missouri, we would have owned a gym by this point, stuff like that. Zoning and shit like that in Missouri is way different. Getting a pop-up building, you know, it's yeah. not as expensive uh, cost of living up there. But your experience when you came back, you said it was pretty easy because you played professionally and you went into the fitness world. People were already asking you. That's one of the things is I went into grad school. I played college football. So people would ask me, you know, like I said, we started at 12 years old. We're Maryville. So I enjoyed working out from a young age. If you didn't work out, they wouldn't let you play in high school. So then I never quit. So since 12 years old, I'm 37. So since 12 years old, fifth grade range um until now i've never quit working out because i played college football after i went to grad school i ran the fitness center and i helped coach uh northwest missouri state with linebackers so i still continue to work out and then i went into personal training so i continued to work out then i got into bodybuilding on top of that and continued to work out and so that's where i tell people like sometimes like yourself that you could be a late person to it for me yeah, i just always knew like I wanted to coach and then I was like, it didn't work out. So the next thing I love is strength and conditioning, but I don't really want to move around with that lifestyle like we were talking earlier. Yeah. And then I saw how much more money you could make on the entrepreneurial side. So that's the side that I went with my cousin, personal training stuff. I went to Kansas City, so I didn't know anybody. I'm like, we were talking earlier. You said yeah. after you got done, you said it was kind of like shooting fish in a barrel to get clients and stuff. It was pretty easy. And so easy. go ahead and talk about your, because your mom owned the gym, correct? Yeah, yeah. Not, it, so she was more like my I call her my fitness mom. Um she wasn't my mom. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Got, gotcha. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. But you went is that where you first started at? Was so no at gym? um I first first started my cousin on the gym. Um Okay. Yeah, my cousin. So you come you come over from playing basketball, COVID hits. And then you go to your cousin's gym and start doing some personal training. Oh, no, so I was I was training there before. So while I got was, it, yeah, while I was training myself to get ready to go play professional, I was still training out of his gym, um, helping with um, clients and members because it was a. I think at the time it was a membership based gym. Got, it. but he still had clients, so I was training members and clients. Then after the after the pandemic, um, and I stopped playing ball. That's when I went to my my mom, gym mom. Very nice, very nice. And that was a nice little setup. And and now when you first started, what would you say when you first started personal training, the biggest shock or the most unexpected thing was that you realized when you first started personal training? The biggest shock. I can shock. tell you this. Most people fucking, most of these trainers, they just like working out. Yeah. They're not really personal trainers. They just right. like to work out True. and they're in decent shape. So they're like, I can go train other people. I just, yeah, if I make them do random shit, they're going to get in a decent shape. But no scientific understanding, anatomy, physiology, right. nutrition, nothing, you know, none of this stuff. And so what was your experience like uh, when you got in, into the field and what did you like? What didn't you? I would say the thing that I liked the most was the fact that you're helping people. You're bringing value to people by mm -hmm. you doing what you love to do and you, you're helping people with that. I've always said just because you work out don't make you a trainer. I've always said that. People, oh, I work out. Like you said, I work out. I look good. I'm going to start training people. It, it does not work that way. Like, That's the problem with a lot of these trainers. You start looking at their background and their fucking experience, and you're like, you just started. You have yeah. no experience. You didn't play any sports. You have going to have no education on the subject matter. You did IT, and now you're a trainer. Like, it just, yeah, it's crazy. Out and uh, what was I about to say? It's, it's guys that physically look better than I do, but. They're not training is not their forte, you know. No, so no, yeah, but yeah, I would say the thing that I like was definitely helping people, man. I, I have a passion, a real deep passion for helping other people achieve great things or they whatever mm -hmm. it is that they set out to achieve. I have a passion for that. The thing that I probably did not like, especially starting off, was you know the inconsistency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. General population is way different than when you were playing sports. Like when you were playing sports, playing basketball you didn't get a chance to say like, hey, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to be a little late huh? professionally, collegiately, high school um, athletics. It's not how it works. And so like when you get into the general population, you're not going to get the whole truth. Hey, I'm only having one glass of wine. And you find out they're like two pours, right? Or I've been tracking my calories except on the weekends, but they didn't tell you not on the weekends. They just said they're tracking calories. And then you're like, well, why are we fucking losing weight? So it's, yes, I get it. That's the part that's very frustrating. That's why it, it was, it's, it's, yeah, it's that part. 
Because I feel like a lot of times they try to play us like we're crazy, like we don't know what we're doing. It's that. And then the other part is, like, if I'm training, you're a trainer, I'm a trainer. I'm training you. I'm helping you. I'm showing you the ropes. I'm showing you how to do these things. And then you you go get advice from somebody who doesn't even work out themselves. And you come back and tell me, well, well John John said if I do this, I'm like, who is John John? And then you show me what John John looked like and he looked worse or he or she looked worse than you do. So it's yeah. like the only only thing you can do at that point is just kill them with science and kill them with research. Because yeah. then at that point it's like it's like, okay. And a lot of times the reason they're going and doing that, bro, is because they don't like the answer they got from you. Exactly. And because if it's the if it's the correct one and that's the one that Truth is scientifically backed, yeah, they're like, Well, if Truth that's hurts, you know, right. like people like we tell people, okay, I mean, it really does come down to eat eat less, move more. Move more but yeah. then it comes down to things like, Okay, when are you timing things? Can we be flexible with it and still re- reach our goals? You know, all this stuff. But like when you tell somebody something, I had some guys in the bodybuilding team like that with some of these supplements. And I told them, I was like, the fat burners um, and and things like that don't do anything. Test boosters, testosterone boosters. I'm like, they don't do anything. And they're like, well, you know, look at this. Look at that. I'm like, I don't give a fuck what you show me because these are just articles. They're not even fucking scientific research. The scientific research says they won't do a goddamn thing. So you can send me a hundred fucking articles from these fucking jabronis or fitness influencers. It's not yeah. going to change what I'm going to think about it because the science is saying this. And so they still would do it and they still would take those things and they still would ask questions or try to send me shit because, because they didn't like the answer and they were hoping, Hey, if right. I keep poking and prodding enough, I'm going to get a different answer. It's like people with losing weight. You know, even you even tell people like, okay, you can have one. You just got to track it. we got to be in a calorie deficit, you know, hit our protein goals, all these things. And then they're like, well, I, I only drank four glasses. You know, you said we could have one if it fit. I was only at 1,400 calories. Well, motherfucker, you're obviously higher than that because you didn't lose any fucking weight. And then your husband told me you're drinking a fucking full pour. And so four one servings that are full pours turns into fucking eight. You know what I'm saying? Now so like way different calorie. Yeah. yeah, now you're in a surplus. Or or maybe we're just at maintenance and you're just maintenance. staying the same. You know, so yeah. So So that's the frustrating part with that. Well, that's awesome, man. That's one of the things that I love about personal training too, is helping people. I tell people like changing their confidence. You know, I had a a couple individuals, males and females in Kansas City where they were having trouble in the dating game and stuff like that. We dropped 20, 30 pounds and boom, they got a girlfriend right away, boyfriend right away. (laughs) You know, since they never had one, they also got married right away. You know, all that type (laughs) of stuff. Well, go ahead, buddy. I'm going to let you, we'll close out here real quick. This has been awesome getting to know you. Go ahead and talk a little bit about your training style, your training philosophy, what you did up there in Georgia, and then tell us what you're going to be transitioning to down here as you come down to Florida and what your what your future aspirations and expectations for you and your business are. Well, my training style is a little, I don't want to say it's unorthodox, but I'm one of those trainers who, like, when I'm training you, I like to have fun. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, I like to, I like to joke. I like to, you know, clown a little bit here and there. But I'm also here to let you know, like, even with all of that, I'm going to push you, I'm going to help you get better, and I don't do the excuses, the complaining, all the whining. You can do all that all day long. I'm going to push you past whatever limitations that you may think you have. Um, I think that's my gift. Like, you know, I can make something tough be fun, but still be beneficial. <laughs> as far as, you know, and I and I did great. I did really well up from my hometown in Georgia and Brunswick. Uh, and now moving down to Tampa Bay, I mean, I just look to just add, expand on that. Really, you know, my ultimate goal overall, I want celebrity clients. That that's what it is. I'll be selling my own gym one day, if God willing, I have my own gym. <laughs> but celebrity clients helping train big names. I don't know what 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 that's about, but that's something I've always wanted to do. Like right? even mm-hmm. when I when I first started, like, I want to train. I want to start training celebrities. Mm-hmm. And the reason for moving was, I mean, obviously I was doing well in my hometown, but at some point I just like like competition in a sense, like. Moving to a bigger area where I can learn more, mm-hmm. I can truly grow and really expand, get, you know, soak up more knowledge from people who are doing, either doing better than I am or are higher levels or whatever the case is. Not comparing myself, but I can learn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can learn from them. Some, uh, even a guy like yourself, learn from people like you guys and grow and become a better version of what I already am. And go ahead and tell everybody what kind of services you're providing right now. I know you've got an online version of uh, your training. You've got uh, the studio that we're sharing together here in the Clearwater Largo area. Um, go ahead and 
give them what you're offering and how they can get a hold of you for coaching and for training or how they can come see us at the studio and, and get with you and all that stuff. Well, um, right now I'm offering, you know, in-person training here in the Largo, Clearwater area, or, or even just the, the Pinellas County, because you can come from anywhere in this area and come train for in-person. Mm -hmm. I am doing virtual right now. I'm listen, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't know how long, how much longer I'll be doing virtual. So, um, but I am doing virtual right now. So you can get that is what I'm also doing my own little little online training thing. You can got you guys can reach me on Instagram. It's Jaquan C Brown. That's J Q U A N C Brown. Um, you can reach me on Facebook. It's Quan Brown. Well, that's awesome, buddy. And I'm looking forward to getting to do more content. We're gonna start filming more and talking more yes, sir. You know, about fitness stuff. I really there's so much bad advice and and again we can talk more off camera about this, but. So much bad advice with uh, training and mm -hmm. nutrition. So I want to do some videos where we break down some of these videos and claims. I mean, there's some crazy stuff from people like Gary Bracca. There's a bodybuilding guy that calls people out for bad form. But even re in reality, like under the circumstance, like certain certain movements like are okay. To well, like he was getting on this guy for he overextended in this deadlift and then he was bouncing the deadlift off the ground. But it was also like fucking 600 pounds. And the guy was like number two in the world for the open bodybuilding. So Mr. Olympia, he got second and he won it one year. So the thing is, like at certain points when you're at that heavy a weight, you can bounce it and you can do things like that and still see a benefit. Now, if you lighten it up and the weight's lighter, yeah, you don't want to be bouncing that shit. You want it slow, slow and controlled. But I, I do want to get on and start breaking down. A lot of people are debunking the nutrition stuff. Like, I'm comfortable with it all. Oh, I'm Okay, cool. I've always wanted to kind of voice my opinion on where fitness is now. Fitness is a billion dollar industry is booming, like, but as a, like you said, there's a lot. There's a lot of misinformation, and people are so they're so connected and tuned into, I guess, what looks good and what sounds good rather than what is what is good. So I'm all yes, for it. Yeah. Well, and, and that's that's one of the problems with the the uh, like you were saying earlier. Some of the guys uh, like right now I'm in my off season, so I'm like two fifteen, two twenty, and I'm only five eight. So like I'm puffier, I'm bigger, uh, more body fat. But these guys that are in better shape than sometimes or growth, and people are like, oh well, they're in good, really good shape, so they must know what they're talking about. Fuck, when I get in season, I'm in way better shape than these people. Right, so like right. you can't you judge be. people's coaching and knowledge off of how they look, but that's what a lot of these people fall for, just like with the marketing with the commercial TV, the foods yeah. and clothing and all this shit. So that's the thing is like I would love to get on. I've got a lot of videos saved up. I've been filming myself talking about these videos and debunking them. But if we can get on and tag team them, even even have a little debate on some of them if we have different views, but we'll get on and start shooting some more content. Anything else that you want to say to everybody before we hop off here? Uh, nah. I'll just y'all just stay tuned because got some good stuff. Good stuff coming. Big things coming. Big things coming. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you, brother, and I'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Thank you, man.